Hi, everyone. Dr. B here again. Thank you very much for joining me for another small bite at Ask the Dentist. Uh, small bite, big implications on this one. This one kind of flew below the radar for me for a long time. And I just came across this study. It's a uh, it's about how yeast infections in the mouth, which I think are pretty common. I'll talk about how common they are, uh, according to some. But uh, as a dentist, we see a lot of yeast infections in the mouth. This is uh, candida, thrush. These are all different older terms that refer to a candida albican infection of the mouth. And this is a yeast uh, organism that is in our mouth. Everyone has it. It's part of the oral microbiome. Uh, it's always there. Uh, it probably has some purpose, but when it overgrows, you've got a white tongue. I'll talk about symptoms in a minute. Uh, it smells bad. You've got a coated white tongue. You get little patches on the back of your throat. It can even be in the esophagus. Um, and and the cheeks and yeast yeast infections in the mouth uh, or candidiasis is pretty well um, uh, identified in the mouth just by visual cues. But still, it's better to get tested for it. And I think you're going to want to get tested after you hear what how it is connected to this oral systemic connection. What what does it lead to in the body? Um, so we'll talk about how to get rid of it, how to know you have it and, and all of that. But let, let me let me give you the punchline right now. And it's based on this study here out of Baylor College. A lot of good stuff coming out of Baylor Medical School in terms of studies. Uh, so I always get excited when it's from Baylor. However, um, this connects, I'll, I'll read you the title. It may mean nothing to you. Toll-like receptor 4 and CD11B expressed on microglia coordinate eradication of candida albican cerebral mycosis. What that what what they're what this study is saying is that there's a connection between this simple yeast infection in the mouth and Alzheimer's. That is the punchline. And again, uh, you know, I've talked before about P. gingivalis, the the primary bug involved in gum disease, uh, which is very prevalent, uh, more prevalent than uh, a yeast infection. And we've talked about its prevalence uh, and how it's connected to, uh, how it's causal, actually. Uh, studies now are discussing a causal link between this infection that 70% of us have after age, I think it's 60, 40, 5% of us have it after age 25, 30, actually after age 30, uh, pretty common disease. Uh, uh, most diseases in the mouth are, are very common, unfortunately. Uh, decay is, tooth decay is the number one disease in the world. Uh, it's the most prevalent. Um, but but again, we, we, we've known about this for a while, that there's a connection between gum disease and Alzheimer's. But now there's this study talking about, and it's not just out of the blue, this, uh, th these um, uh, researchers have been studying fungi and, and connections to how it alters or, or how it gets into other parts of the body. But now they're connecting the uh, albican, uh, uh, let's just call it yeast, the yeast organism, it can cross the blood brain barrier it actually modifies the blood brain barrier, which many things do. A lot of chemicals can do that. It can make it more porous. You've heard me say that fluoride passes the blood brain barrier. That also creates inflammation in the brain. There are a lot of things involved in oral health that, that affect the brain, unfortunately. And, and let's add this to the list now. Um, so the yeast cells get in there and then the body responds. I, I won't get into all the gory details, um, I'd rather get into the solution right away and what to look for, but all sorts of um, mechanisms described in the study. Uh, Candida albican enters the brain, activates two separate mechanisms in brain cells that promote its clearance. The brain's trying to protect itself. And this is important for understanding, for the understanding of Alzheimer's disease development. Uh, uh, there's also ge ge uh, generating, there's a generation of an amyloid beta plaque. We know what that is. That's now a symptom or a sign that there is neurodegenerative diseases in the brain. 
And these toxic protein fragments from the amyloid precursor protein, uh, they're considered to be at the center of the development of Alzheimer's disease. And when the brain sees fluoride or P. gingivalis, or now a yeast cell, it's laying down this amyloid plaque. Um, how does it enter the brain? Uh, I talked a little bit about that. It produces an enzyme called aspartic, uh, it's an aspartic protease. It's a SAPS, S-A-P-S. And this breaks down the blood brain, blood brain barrier. Uh, unfortunately, that happens. Um, and it's, it's not perfect. Um, and this gives uh, fungus the access to the brain when uh, allowing it to cause damage and inflammation in the brain. Uh, they talk about how the fungus is effectively cleared from the brain. The, uh, my point there is I don't want to get into the details or all these. There's a candidialysin mediated activation of the microglia. Those are the cells that protect the brain. Uh, but what I want to say there is that there is a mechanism in place that allows the brain to clear itself of fungi, but it's not perfect and it's not complete. That's an important point. So really you can't just rely on that. You really have to prevent the infection in the mouth so that the brain doesn't have to deal with this as imperfectly as, as it's able. So, um, okay. So just wanted to, to put this out. Um, I will put a link in, in the show notes for the study. Um, and by the way, this, the study is very complicated. It's very difficult to understand. I actually had to speak to a researcher um, uh, about this uh, just to clear some things up, that, some questions I had. But what you can do is when you, when you see the study, uh, just read the introduction, read the conclusion, and then type into Google and you'll see all the reviews of this study. Um, I found mine through a newsletter that I subscribe to, Neuro neuro i think neuroscience um and then and then i went right to the study so type in something like so you can get more of a of a breakdown and confirm that i'm telling you uh, that this study exists perhaps if you're wondering um type in something like yeast infections uh causing alzheimer's or c albicans uh effect on the brain. And you'll get a host of uh, reviews of this study. And by the way, this study was um, was just published 2023, a few days ago. So it's pretty recent, but you, you'll you'll see reviews of it on the on the on the uh, on the web. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about the dental end of things. Uh, I hope I have convinced you that the key here is to prevent is to prevent the infection to begin with. I also told you that we all have yeast cells in our mouth. It's part of the oral microbiome. Uh, via testing, we know this to be the case, oral microbiome testing. And of course we have P. gingivalis, uh, fluoride we shouldn't be absorbing or taking in. Um, that's an easy one. You can just just eliminate that from, your, from consumption um, and exposure. But Dealing with a bug that's already present in your mouth is a little different. You actually have to, you have to actively help nourish and allow the biomes in your body. Let's, we're speaking of the oral microbiome in this case to do their job effectively. And that is to keep this bug down so that it doesn't become an infection where the volume or the numbers of these bugs are so great that they uh, are floating around in your bloodstream and getting into the brain. So, so you can't take a pill, you can't take medication, you can't eliminate this, this um, E cell in your mouth. Uh, you have to modulate it. You have to uh, set your body up for success. So again, that's diet, um, you know, eating the right foods. By the way, if you do have yeast infections um, in your mouth, often you're gonna have bad breath. You're gonna see a white coating on your tongue. You're gonna have loss of taste, cotton-like feeling in the mouth, uh, redness or soreness. It may even be difficult for you to eat certain foods because there'll be a little bit of discomfort. It's almost like a burn, it feels like a burn, like a pizza burn. Um, white patches on the inner cheeks, tongue, roof of the mouth, even the throat, it gets down to the esophagus. Um, that's something your dentist cannot see. You would need an endoscopy for that. Uh, but if it's in the mouth, it could be in the throat. So your dentist should refer you to an ENT for that camera down the throat, the endoscopy. Um, 
uh, cracking and redness of the corners of the mouth, uh, chymageritis, uh, very common. A lot of people have this, and that's typically a yeast infection. And uh, usually an antifungal cream will help with that. But again, we're talking about just preventing this to uh, from occurring. Um, so if you have candidiasis, um, then obviously your oral microbiome has not been able, been able to keep this, this uh, yeast cell down. And what can you do to um, uh, to bring it back? In other words, let your oral microbiome, oral microbiome do its job. So first up for me would be mouth taping. If you're a mouth breather, uh, you, are, you are more likely to have uh, candidiasis or yeast infection in the mouth. Um, it's just, it's a pH thing. Uh, pH will drop, it's more acidic. Saliva helps the oral microbiome do its job. It's the vehicle for bringing the oral microbiome to all parts of the, all parts of the mouth. Um, it also has the right consistency and the right ingredients for the oral microbiome to thrive. So first off would be to mouth tape, uh, figure out why, if you can't mouth tape, why are you mouth breathing? Why can you not breathe your nose? That's another ENT referral. Uh, the other thing is, is diet, um, uh, carbs, yeast cells love carbs. So if you're eating a lot of manufactured, uh, uh, processed foods, ultra processed foods, crackers, goldfish, candy, sugary foods, uh, processed breads, um, uh, you are more likely to have a yeast infection. Uh, other things, if you're wearing dentures, denture, uh, the elderly that are wearing dentures, you'll get a, a yeast infection on the tissue between the denture and for example, the, the palate, very, very common. Keep those dentures clean. Um, don't use conventional mouthwash. A lot of people go to conventional mouthwash and that actually could make your uh, use infection worse because it's uh, altering the microbiome. It's preventing the microbiome from doing its job. It's creating a dysbiosis, which is what is creating, or the, it's the reason for uh, super, well, uh, populations of yeast cells and other bugs uh, to to be higher than than, than they should be. Uh, cancer patients again, that's uh, related to saliva to the therapy for cancer. Uh, saliva flow is reduced. Uh, certain medications, uh, inhalers. Uh, there's a uh, in people that use inhalers uh, daily are tend to have um, uh, yeast infections, and they should rinse out with uh, oil pulling would be fine, would be safe, uh, salt water rinses, or just water, just water, but stay away from uh, antimicrobial mouthwashes. A uh, lot of bad things there. We've talked about it, elevated blood pressure uh, and, and causing a dysbiosis of the oral microbiome, which can lead to a yeast infection, which can get into your brain. Anyway, you, you know, you know how that works. Uh, people that smoke uh, get it as well. So, so Maintain good oral health, obviously. Rinse your mouth out, brush your teeth, floss. Uh, scrape your tongue. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's a big one. Um, by scraping your tongue, and a lot of yeast infections start and end and are most likely to be on the tongue. And scraping your tongue can really help you reset that oral microbiome as long as you've met all the other conditions. So that is very, very important. If you have a yeast infection in your mouth, I would scrape three times a day. Be gentle though, because scraping a tongue that has a yeast infection could actually, you'll, you'll see a little blood. You're not cutting your tongue, but you're not damaging it. Do what you can, uh, but you'll see a little blood come off at first. The tissue on the tongue is very inflamed and very fragile. It, it bleeds upon provocation is the term we're using. You're not cutting it. You're not lacerating it, but uh, tissue like gum tissue that is chronically inflamed from uh, a, a gum infection, uh, sorry, from periodontal disease that will bleed upon provocation, i.e. flossing or even brushing or even spitting out of the sink, you'll see that. Uh, not a good sign, definitely have to work on that. So um, if you have a, a, a weakened immune system, um, definitely. I saw a lot of um, yeast infections during COVID. Uh, not a lot of data on that, but again, it wasn't a surprise to me. Uh, HIV, uh, I, I was a young dentist in San Francisco when the HIV infections uh, uh, were first being seen. And, and that was... Um, one of the uh, 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 comorbidities of, of HIV. Uh, there were other things in the mouth that were visible as well, and yeast infection was one of them. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so 
scraping your tongue, mouth taping, rinsing with salt water or water, oil pulling, nourishing the oral microbiome, eating properly, uh, testing. Uh, again, uh, my favorite oral microbiome test, the only one that will really look at the type of yeast you have. It'll give you a halitosis score. Um, you can look at the raw data in the test. It'll, it'll come up uh, that you do have a high yeast infection. Definitely test for it. Your dentist may look at it and say it's not a yeast infection when in fact it is. Sometimes it's hard to see or smell and catch it early. Um, and again, if there's a connection to Alzheimer's, why wouldn't you want to know this uh, in its prodromal state? In other words, you can't see the effects in the mouth yet, but but you have high yeast levels uh, or or even it may be missed by your dentist or hygienist because it, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, but it's rel relatively easy for a dentist to, to, to see it, but it could be other things. It could be a leukoplakia and there are other conditions that mimic that. So why not definitively know that you are, especially if you're having this chronically, that you have a yeast infection problem, and then you can get to the root cause of, of why this is, um, maybe you know that you're going to be needing to use an inhaler. You may have to check in every month to make sure that your yeast uh, populations in the mouth are, are not out of control. So uh, we talked about treatment. There are more aggressive treatments, but I would start the mouth taping, rinsing with salt water, elbow pulling, change your diet. I would do all the uh, tongue scraping. I would do all of that first before going on the antifungals. Nystatin is the most popular one. I've used a lot of that in my dental practice, but I try and address the root causes first to see if we can do it without using an antifungal. There are a lot of practitioners that say antifungals are nowhere near as bad as because they're more targeted as an antibiotic, but I would be wary of that. Use it as a uh, last resort. Um, and again, if you're using a medication like this, there are other ones. Uh, there's uh, clotomiazole, um, nystatin. There are lots of antifungal medications. Uh, you can swish with them. There are pastules. There's some that you ingest, but again, there's, there's always a side effect with medication. And here's the problem. You may not have addressed all the other things that I spoke about first. That's just how I do it. I talk about all the root causes and things that can be addressed in that area before I talk about medication. Most dentists, most physicians jump to the medication first and the medication may work. You may have to use a lot of it, but if you haven't addressed the things that caused this infection, this overpopulation in this case of E cells, then it's just gonna come back. And then the medication may not work as well. The second time you'll have to change medications, address the root causes first, and maybe you won't need the medication. And if you do, then it's less likely that, well, it's more likely that the medication will work and that you won't, it's more likely that you won't be have to take it again. Um, okay, so we talked about that mouth taping. Um, here's one thing that's a little controversial. It's always worked well in my clinical practice. Um, and I use this, um, I recommend this often for many other things, uh, other conditions, uh, even bad breath. Um, but in this case, it really works. I tell the patient to stop using all oral care products. There are things in toothpaste. There are things in mouthwash. Um, there are things in the tablets that are now becoming popular. Um, you know, anything you use in the mouth to help combat bad breath or even whitening of your teeth. All these products, stop using it for six weeks, make the other changes I discussed. And because you're not using these products, because most of these products try and take down and disinfect the mouth, take down the oral microbiome, uh, the oral microbiome all of a sudden within weeks, sometimes it's three to four to five days, give it six weeks. All of a sudden the oral microbiome says, hey, I'm in good shape now. I'm not dealing with all this other crap. Um, I can take care of this on my own and it does. So anyway, add that to the list. Um, maybe that should be on the top of the list, but all those things, try that first and then you won't have to worry about Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, I, I know it's not that clear. So the study indicates that there is a connection and that more research is required. Um, this is something simple. And again, it's a lesser of two evils. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's make sure the oral microbiome is able to do its job. 
And that way we don't have to worry about these connections uh, or, or yeast cells getting across the blood brain barrier. And again, I know that we're talking about shades of gray, it's not binary. Um, and even if it was, we, we don't know what, what the dosage is, how much yeast has to get in the brain for how long to cause and how much amyloid plaque from that process has to be, has to, has to occur before we cross over into a neurodegenerative disease. Is it reversible at that point? These are all things that the study admits that it has to, has to look at. So, um, Anyway, what else did I want to talk about? I, I mentioned statistics a little bit. Um, it, yeah, the exact number of cases of candidiasis in the mouth, throat, and esophagus in the United States is difficult to determine. Uh, this is because there's no natural surveillance for these infections. I that this was a, re, a review of the study um, in a in a in another uh, from another source, and so I've seen some numbers. It's it's always uncommon. Uh, I would disagree with that. Um, and, and maybe early in my career, uh, early eighties, it wasn't that common. I would say about, I would say in the last 15 years that, and maybe because, uh, uh, mouth breathing has become more common. Uh, maybe meds have changed. Maybe, uh, foods have gotten more processed. I mean, there are a lot of factors here at play. Uh, but I would say that it is a lot more common, especially in children, especially in the elderly, but I'll, I'll very common actually in young millennials. Um, I'm not using that term other than to describe age. Um, I'm not, uh, in, in 20 to 35, 38, may, maybe 40 year olds, uh, that category has bumped up a lot. And I don't know the reason why. Um, but again, here's something that happens in the mouth that is easy to prevent that can lead to a neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's. Uh, more on this later, uh, I'm gonna follow up on this. I'm gonna, I, I've actually reached out to some of the uh, researchers. It'd be great to get them on a podcast and talk about this. To me, it flew under the radar. I was a little taken aback and surprised by this. I didn't make that association. And what it teaches me is that, well, it reinforces for me is that what happens in the mouth goes to the body, happens in the body, affects the body. And again, the classic examples, the P. gingivalis and the gingipan production crossing the blood-brain barrier. Fluoride is another example of that. There are a lot of things in oral health that are causing problems for the rest of the body, like the brain. So again, always looking out for this kind of stuff. I'm sure we'll hear more about this in particular and about other bugs that are getting into other parts of the body, like into your joints, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Definitely a, definitely a connection there. Uh, I'll be talking more about the oral systemic connection. Fascinating stuff, easy to prevent. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, leave some comments below. I will take a look at your comments. And if you really want to have this level of, of, of um, conversation um, and, and connection, uh, to a dentist, uh, you're you're only going to get it from a functional dentist, someone that's looking at this, someone who's connecting all the dots, someone who's working and practicing upstream, uh, looking at what is causing these things, not just in the mouth but in the rest of the body, things that in the things that occur in the mouth that are creating problems in the body. Again, get tested, know your oral microbiome, know where you stand. This is very very important. I'll put a link. Um, in the show notes on that, that company Bristol, and I've mentioned this before in an Instagram post has come out with their own probiotic, something I forgot to mention. Uh, obviously prebiotics are good because they feed the oral microbiome. So eating a lot of plant-based products, um, fermented products can be good to prevent yeast infections, but also adding the bugs, uh, can also help. There's some research now coming out on post biotics post -syn and symbiotics. I'm going to talk more about that later. It's a little complicated and it's a little unclear on how that's working, but for now, definitely um, test your oral microbiome, know where you stand. Something you should probably be doing every six months, maybe every year if you're healthy. If you're unhealthy, if you're getting a lot of cavities, a lot of gum disease, yeast infections, uh, probably every four to six weeks, and then try uh, oral, oral uh, probiotics. So I hope that was of some help. Didn't mean to scare you. One more thing to worry about. Our brains uh, evidently are very, very vulnerable and they're doing the best job they can. What we need to do is um, 
upstream, we need to prevent all these bugs from getting out into the, into the rest of the body. Uh, oh, forgot to mention, I got sidetracked there. If you want to have this kind of conversation or you want a dentist or are looking for a dentist that can make these associations and, and worry for you and look for yeast infections, something as simple as that, because he knows, she knows that there's a connection to neurodegenerative diseases then go to our directory to find a functional dentist. Again, that list grew about by three in the last week, three providers, very pleased with that. And um, uh, that's at our on our website, askthedentists.com slash directory. Again, thank you so much for your interest in oral health. Small bite, but big implications today, how a little uh, sometimes under the radar infection, use infection that can be very chronic can lead to inflammation in the brain. We don't want that we can prevent it. Thanks for listening. See you next week.